There is so much information related to the MCAT online and let me tell you, some of it is definitely not true. We're going to use this video to bust some common myths related to the MCAT so it can help you prepare better for this giant exam. I've definitely heard some lies when I was preparing for the MCAT so if you've heard some before, leave them in the comments below. You should also follow us on our TikTok and our Instagram where we post more often. Let's get into it. Let me first give you some reasons for why there are so many lies out there. People think that if something works for someone, it must work for everyone. But as you can imagine, everyone is different. So take the things you see online with a grain of salt. You know your study strategy the best, so incorporate whatever you think will work. To be honest with you, we were facing this exact problem when we took the MCAT. We would believe some of the lies that were on the internet and this would negatively impact our confidence and our MCAT score, which is why we've decided to tell you guys the major lies today. Let me start off with the most ridiculous one that I keep hearing, which is that you need to study for at least six months to be able to do well in this exam or else you're gonna fail. Guys, you need four months at max to study for the exam. If anything, some people study for 1.5 months and then they do practice questions for the rest of the 1.5 months and take the exam at the end of the three month mark six months is definitely not optimal. Now you might be wondering how all this even makes sense. Obviously, more time spent studying equals better marks, right? It's actually the opposite in this case. The MCAT itself has a lot of content you need to memorize, and you may not have enough time to go over this content over and over again, and you're going to forget this content by the time you have your MCAT, which is six months away. For instance, let's say you study about ZDNA in your first month of preparation. There's so much information that in month two and month three, you don't actually get around to reviewing ZDNA again. But unfortunately, on the day of your exam, they ask you a question about ZDNA. But because you reviewed it so long ago, you can't seem to remember what it is and you end up getting the question wrong. One effective strategy that students use is taking a diagnostic MCAT at the beginning of your preparation. Doing this will help you understand which concepts you're more comfortable with and which concepts you need more help on. This will help you make the most out of your study time. You should check out our three month schedule that we created before in this video. Another important factor to consider is burnout. Studying for the MCAT can be intense and trying to study for long periods of time without breaks can lead to burnout. You need to prioritize your own mental health and well-being. When I was preparing, I couldn't feel the negative effects of burnout right away. For example, if I spent the entire day studying without any breaks, and as a result, I couldn't study as well the next day. Therefore, you need to find that right balance. That's enough about the first lie. Let's move on to the next one. And this one really gets on my nerves. People used to tell me that it's important to take notes for every single piece of content you go through. And this is simply not true. While this method can be effective for some people, it's generally not the most efficient and time is the name of the game when it comes to MCAT preparation. That's why I would recommend different methods of preparation that are just as, if not more effective. You can take notes for things that you're not as strong in, or you can take to other study methods like concept maps and flashcards. Now keep in mind, the goal of content review is to understand the content in the most efficient way possible, not just memorizing facts. If writing down the material helps you reinforce the content, then go for it. But if you feel that it's not as effective, don't be afraid to try other study methods. For example, in a specific chapter that I was working on when I was studying for the MCAT, I realized that I already knew a lot of the content. So I straight up just skipped taking notes for that specific chapter. It's as simple as that. One alternative to taking detailed notes is instead focusing on active learning techniques. For example, you could teach someone what you're learning or you could apply it to real world scenarios. These methods can help reinforce your learning and make sure that your recall on the exam is better. For example, when I was studying for the Krebs cycle, I would go downstairs and teach my mom the Krebs cycle in simple words every single day. Funny enough, I still can't get that out of my system and I remember it fully. The key here is to be flexible and be willing to completely adapt your study strategy based on your progression. What you shouldn't do though is let your confidence get impacted by this. This is a process of experimentation and there are ups and downs. You might have friends that are taking notes all the time and because of this, you might feel pressured to do the same for fear that you may not do well. But remember that just because something is working for someone else doesn't mean that it'll work for you. Let's move on to line number three, which is that they say it is impossible to study for the car section. And I know a lot of Canadians right now are angry because of how important the car section and the car score is 
for Canadian medical schools. But trust me guys, I'm here to tell you that even though the car section is very challenging, it's definitely very possible to improve your score and do well in that section. One of the best ways to study for cars is one, obviously practicing regularly, but second, reading difficult material every day, such as philosophical content or ethical readings or old literature. This can really help you improve your critical thinking skills as well as reading comprehension. Another helpful strategy is practicing the car section scenarios under time circumstances. There are many resources out there, whether that be practice questions or books or other learning materials, but being in a timed environment will simulate what you actually need to do in the exam. By practicing regularly under timed conditions, you will be able to answer all of these questions very quickly and you'll save a lot of time on your exam, which will increase your score dramatically. It's also important to approach CARS questions strategically. Make sure you take enough time to read the passage thoroughly and understand the main idea before actually moving on to the questions. Pay attention specifically to the author's tone and purpose so that you can extract the exact amount of information you need to answer the questions properly. And lastly, don't get discouraged if you find cars challenging at first. It's a skill that takes time to develop, so believe in yourself and keep going. With dedication and perseverance, you can definitely improve your car score. And stop listening to the naysayers. We believe in you. Now let's move on to line number four. I personally hate this one. I hear a lot of people saying, just study the high yield material, bro, and you're going to do well. While it's true that certain topics come up more than others on the MCAT, just studying the high yield topics is a huge mistake. The MCAT is a test that tests your knowledge on many wide range of topics, so you need to know everything rather than just a small subset of topics. Ignoring less commonly tested topics might leave you unprepared for questions related to these topics that might appear on the exam. You need to strike a balance between preparing for the high yield content versus having a broad understanding of the material. I remember a few days before a practice exam when I decided to ignore the concept of Ruffini corpuscles because I thought this concept was completely irrelevant and really low yield. But guess what happened? It appeared on my exam. One approach that students find effective is by actually first understanding all the content, going over all the tiny little details in your initial study period, and then mostly focusing on the high yield content closer to the exam. This will help you become a lot more prepared and a lot more confident for the exam. Also something important to keep in mind is that the MCAT isn't a knowledge test. It's a test on how you can apply that knowledge. Therefore, even for low yield topics, you need to know the underlying concepts under them so you can actually apply that low yield knowledge to the question and get it right. Sometimes we use a study strategy called mind mapping in order to effectively remember content. This basically involves connecting many different major details and minor details together in your head or on a whiteboard. What this does is, is that if you forget a very specific piece of information, you'll actually remember what that specific information is connected to in the grand scheme of things, which may allow you to recall what that specific piece of information was. So if we take the example of Ruffini corpuscles again, on the whiteboard, you may want to write down everything that's related to the Ruffini corpuscles, including other parts of the epidermis, so that when you see these parts of the epidermis in a question, this will prime you to remember the Ruffini corpuscles. The last slide we want to go over is the fact that some people think that you should only use AMC material to study for the actual exam. While AMC material is essential and they provide you with the most accurate representation of the MCAT exam, we believe that it may not be sufficient for your preparation. It's important and essential for you to supplement AMC material with much harder questions and much harder content that you can find online. That is the pro tip here. Some useful supplementary resources include practice tests from prep companies and the questions from the UWorld question bank. I understand that these questions might not be fully representative of AMC questions, but what you're trying to do is create the hardest possible exam you can create for yourself so you're ready when you go into your actual exam. You can do this by doing the hardest questions you can find online and see how well you do on those questions. Here's our recommendation. If you're studying for the MCAT in three months, we would recommend using questions and practice exams from companies that are not the AAMC for the first six to eight weeks of your prep. What this does is that it allows you to develop an approach to similarly styled questions, but not exactly AAMC. This also prepares you for those AAMC exams and practice material, 
which you would then use in the last month of your preparation. You would only be using AAMC content so that you can develop the quote unquote AAMC approach. And it's time to wrap it up. I gotta be honest, seeing all these lies and misinformation spread online is honestly very disappointing. We want to be able to support each other and provide each other with the most accurate information possible, which is why we created this video. Hopefully we're able to help you better prepare for this exam. Good luck and we'll see you guys next Monday. Like this video? Check out our MCAT playlist for even more informational content and check out the links in the description below if you guys want more resources.